time I get in the <laughs> ring, I have something to really... I'm mad. <laughs> okay, Tyrone Crowley, a happy young man. He's 11-0, and, and he's headed for bigger things. To give it to him is this man, Wilfred Benitez. Before the first punch in the opening bell, let's look back with Wilfred Benitez, the champion. To be getting better as he moves up in weight. He too with just the one loss. That also, yes, the Sugar Ray Leonard. He has a draw with Harold Weston. Those are long since forgotten. 26 knockouts. That is not so impressive, but he remember is a counter puncher and a tough one. And here's the game right here, Larry. Yeah, we're seeing uh, a junior middleweight face-off here. It's an in-your-face face-off. <laughs> well, I don't know who's going to win this one. This one is a draw. Yeah, the crowd loves this. I would laugh. You see, that's, that's why I'm not there. You can see it had ended before they ever got to the center of the ring here. Well, we should mention here that Benita's pass is to use early rounds to size up his opponent. Underway round one. Super Waterway Championship. Tommy Hearns on the right in the white trunks. Wilfred Benitez, black trunks, white stripe on the left of your screen right now. Both men on their toes. The feeling out process has begun. So Tommy's going straight at Benitez. And again, the left jab Barry, of Tommy will be the most effective punch, especially in the early rounds, because it was very difficult for me to land some solid blows to Benitez. But we're talking about a totally different story here. Tom is, is, is bigger than I am, and his, 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 arm, his reach is incredible. So that may be a factor here. And he does hurt. I think you said that, made that point abundantly clear. He can't, he can't afford to tighten up, and Benitez, you know, he, he's able to frustrate a fighter, and make, it, make mistakes, and capitalize on it. A lot of bobbing and weaving and fainting right now. And he's had slipping those punches, very characteristic. Burns misses the right hand. Benitez has what I consider a radar. I think what it's going to take for Tommy is, is the jab and some feints. He has to faint him. Well, in fact, he came in with the word super radar on his robe. Well, that was, I saw it the time wants you to buy with that right hand. That's good, too, because you can move the body. Tommy's left jab must be consistent. Yes, keep it out there. Keep it busy. Keep Benitez thinking. When I talked to Benitez yesterday. He was saying that no more fooling around. He trains hard for every fight, trained hard for this fight. He knows it's business now. The major problem is fighting a guy like Tommy, as tall as Tommy is, is the fact getting inside. What I did, and Benitez is pretty much doing the same thing I did, I moved the first few rounds and got to a point where it's that I got Tommy in close, and I was able to get in close, where it's that I was able to deliver some punches. But it's difficult, I tell you, Barry, it's really, I, I was in there. It's tough getting inside with Tommy. Benitez, very patient, really no damage here in the first round inside a minute. Neither man has scored with a punch, but each has his thrown very few. Talking about Benitez's ability to slip punches, I remember Floyd Patterson used to say that he watches the man's chest muscles to see where the punches are coming from. Allows him to almost anticipate before the punch comes. See that right hand there thrown twice thrown by Tommy. Benitez is able to just get out of the way of it. Slip punch is very, very smooth. What Tommy can't fall into, he can't fall into waiting too long. I want to make a couple of points about that round. Benitez did not land a single punch. I think that was a very good round for Tommy Hearns because he went to the body. You can't headhunt with Benitez. He's just too quick. Let's go to Benitez's corner. Quieto, Wilfred. Tranquilito, tranquilito. Tranquilo, tranquilo. 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 Tranquilo.
He's trying to really uh, make Tommy frustrated, make Tommy mad, make Tommy load up with his punches. He can't load up. The left jab leads up to your punches, your combination. So you have to take your time. You it can't afford a, to get mad. It takes a lot of patience to fight a guy like Tommy Hearns, I would think. It takes a, a great deal. In fact, Benitez there with an, uh, an overhand right. It wasn't really that hard, but again, Benitez is trying to find out the best method, the most effective method to get to Tommy Hearns. Benitez, should be pointed out, has been knocked down on numerous occasions. But again, that was back in the days when he really didn't take this whole thing very seriously and felt he could just walk into the ring and whip anybody. He got away with one with Bruce Curry after being knocked down three times. Harold Weston knocked him down. There's a good right hand by Hearns, but he can't double up on it. Almost every one of those missed except the first one. That was a good right hand. He got Benitez bouncing off the ropes and caught him, but not a lot of those were scoring. Not a lot scored as I saw it. Well, there were three or four, and that's a lot when you consider that Benitez hardly landed anything worthwhile in that round again. And we may see a fighter being intimidated. We're gonna take a look at that exchange again as Hearns tries to measure Benitez. Benitez normally likes to fight on the ropes and punch off the ropes but in this case he's just being kept too busy and if, if half the punches are landing that's all that's necessary championship. Wilfred Benitez, Tommy Hearns. You know, Benitez is such a proud champion. He really gets upset. He considers an insult when it, the, uh, the opponent gets the best of him. He picks the pace up. If he gets caught to good shots, he gets strong and more aggressive. So you might see a change in Benitez this round. Hearns has done the only damage in the fight. And in that exchange that you saw in the replay, really only two punches, plus one that was a little bit low, landed. 
One was a good one. One thing is that's unusual about a guy of Tommy Hearns' size is the fact this man can throw so many punches. You know, it's unbelievable. Normally a guy that tall, his hand speed, you know, it's, it's always uh, not that quick. But Tommy can throw so many punches, punches so fast. Tommy is doing a lot of the painting that you expect Wilfred Benitez to do. There's almost a mirror image here. You know, Benitez, his stance, it seems as though he wants to throw a right hand. When I fought Benitez, the same wide stance, it looks as though he's attempting to throw a right hand. So I was always prepared for that. Benitez can't switch hands. He will do it from time to time, but he considers himself a natural right-hander. Counterpunch by Hearns. See, this is the difference here. Benitez is a great counterpuncher, but for a guy with Tommy's height and reach advantage, it's a different story altogether because he, he's able to land Benitez's land, and he pulls back. Tommy's arms are so long, he can hit you on the way out, a way back. Hearns getting inside for just a moment, peppering Benitez with a jab. Now, that's a good punch, guy. The punch that uh, Benitez tried to, uh, attempted to, to land, that up with jab. He goes down like a little crouch and comes up with the left jab. Not straight, but in the angle, upward. Benitez lunging at him, caught him, I think, with the arm more than with the hand that time. Benitez, a combination. End of the round. As Ray indicated, by the stance of Benitez in that round, and it seemed to me, even from the first round, that Benitez was looking to throw a big right hand over the jab of Hearns, but as you say, Hearns has been in and out of there so quick with his long reach that he hasn't been able to reach him. Everything's still behind this hair. The fight progress is a man's reflexes slow down. A lot of the shots is barely missing will start connecting. The main thing, you have control of the fight. And that's a very important factor right now because the fight is very close. It's just the idea of who's controlling who. Okay? And saving everything for when your man makes his big move. So you have it right there to make your move back with him, okay? Okay. Having that and everything is perfect. I thought that Emmanuel Stewart uh, uh, make an excellent <laughs> commentator as, as well as a traitor in that case. Same might be said for you, pal. <laughs> That was echoing across Larry Stewart's thoughts between the last round. Fourth round. Hearns <laughs> just trying to stay loose. He did that against you too, Ray. Well, I think Benitez now is trying to uh, get in some body shots. I'm quite sure he's going to try to throw some. But Tommy, he's able. He surprised me again. He he can box. The guy really can box. Lateral movement and he utilized the ring very well. And see, the problem that Benitez is having the fact of getting close enough to him, because it's really hard to hit Tommy. Of course, a big money fight somewhere down the road, very likely for the winner of this fight. Marvin Hagler awaits somebody. Both men would like to have him. That was Benitez. No damage. Well, I think both of these young, both these young men are looking for bigger paydays, even with marvelous Marvin Hagler. In fact, the winning, having an impressive showing here, especially by a knockout. I mean, without question, Hagler will probably be next. And um, each guy's trying to find a, a big punch to land on each other. I think Tommy, the straight right hand, and Benitez, probably looping right hand, the one I threw on. We look for a tactical fight. It is a tactical fight. A little scraping under the left eye, it looks like, of Wilfred Benitez. Those are the type of left jabs thrown by Tommy. 
is what I was talking about. He has to be very consistent with that left jab. Keep him busy. Keep Benitez thinking. He has to, he has to use that left jab more often. Hearn's getting the better of it early on here. There's a little marking under the left eye of Benitez. It is nothing to worry about at this juncture. I have a feeling, Barry, that uh, Tommy is going to eventually measure up to Benitez and catch him with a good punch. Well, so far, Hearns is getting off quicker and getting out quicker. What's going to be the turning point as far as the fact that when Tommy is able to land a flesh, clean right hand, and Benitez is still there, Benitez won't respect Tommy as much. I think there's still a lot of respect that Benitez holds for Tommy Hearns to punch him power. here and, and to show you how Benitez is such a master boxer and making his opponent miss, Larry. He haven't really loosened up. He started to loosen up in that round, but he's got to loosen up a little bit more. Uh, One thing I've noticed, Larry, it seemed to me that while everyone was expecting Benitez to frustrate Hearns by making him miss, and it appears to me that Benitez is now getting a little frustrated and being more offensive than he likes to be. Yes, but Benitez is starting to come forward, and Tommy is starting to back up a little bit, and that's, starting, that's going to make a difference in this fight. This is the fifth round. Hearns on the right, Benitez on the left. Octavio Moran taking one point away from Tommy Hearns for holding and hitting. Well, that deduction of that one point, I think you're going to see a couple more points deducted because, see, it's not because it's Tommy Hearns' fault. It's just the way that Benitez fights. He gets inside, he faints you and everything. He comes in with his head down. And Tommy, being as tall as he is, probably naturally is going to put his, his arm on his guy's, on his man's head to uh, stop any headbutts. Hearns going to the body early on here in this round. Benitez is moving, and he's using the ring, and he won't let Tommy set. Up on his toes more than I've seen Wilfred Benitez. Again, um, I think it's going to take one big punch thrown by Tommy, and uh, for Benitez to say, well, okay, I can take this guy's best shot, because that's what I was thinking about. I knew Tommy could punch, and I messed around to see how well, how hard he could punch. And he hit with a good shot, and I, from then on, I say this guy can't really hurt me that much. Well, you heard Emmanuel Stewart between the third and fourth round saying everything off the jab, everything off the jab, and Hearns has been pretty effective with the jab so far. And a left hand right there behind the left jab. Benitez getting inside for just a moment on Hearns. What's happened? Benitez is starting to mesmerize Tommy. You know the way he's doing all those feints, and Tommy's waiting. This is a mistake. You can't wait for a guy like Benitez. He makes, he makes you fall asleep. Hearns got the better of that exchange as Benitez tried to get inside and Hearns, Hearns tagged him on the head a couple of times with the left hand. Benitez gives you all those body feints with the hands, with the head, and then all of a sudden he comes across with his right hand, left hook, anything. Any particular punch he's able to throw. Like he attempted to throw a right hand there, which missed Tom. Now, a right hand. There's a right hand, and that knocks Benitez back. They're going to call it a knockdown. Benitez doesn't like it. No question, Benitez was hurt. It came off the right hand by her. Now, that right hand there, I was waiting for it. You see, now we'll see a reaction of Benitez. Whether or not he feels Tommy can hurt him or what. Now, that was a combination of the fact that he was hurt he slipped a little bit. His legs are still not very solid. Okay, 
It was a good clean right hand by Tommy. Benitez seems to have his legs back under it now. And Hearns will pace himself. In the Brown Five. Okay, we're going to take a look at that knockdown here immediately. There's a right hand, right smack on the jaw. And it was more punch than slip. And let's take a look at it from another angle. A quick right hand that seemed to graze him, but was a pretty good punch nonetheless. I think what we saw there, remember we heard Emmanuel Stewart say earlier he's going to make his move. And from what I've said before, Benitez is starting to be more offensive because he's frustrated. And so suddenly, because of that, Benitez was in the range of Hearns. Benitez knows he must make a positive move to get to Hearns, and he's in Hearns' range now, where earlier he was not. This is the sixth round. Tommy Hearns has been in control of this fight. Benitez pacing up early here in the sixth round. Takes two shots from Hearns. Benitez is somewhat reluctant to come inside on Tommy because Tommy is he's able to get off so many punches, whether it's left hook or right hand. I think Benitez feels safer against the road because, I mean, that's his fight. Well, he fought much of his fight with Roberto Duran with his back to the ropes very effectively. Here, Hearns is being very patient. Good shot by Hearns once more, and the legs once more on Benitez. Buckle under him a bit. Well, this is what Benitez has to do. He has to fight Tommy. I mean, he can't, he can't just stand back because Tommy on for so long. So Benitez has to fight, street fighter. clinch and then people criticize Thomas for not clinching me. You learn every fight. That was a good shot. Good uppercut by Hearn. Benitez trying to weather this one. Taking a few shots. Takes the right hand and another left. And takes another straight left and holds on. Benitez is a little dazed, although he still has his senses together. I see Tommy can't punch himself out. She take his time and not fall into Benitez's trap. Benitez wants Tommy to keep punching, punch himself out. But now Benitez appears to me very a little tired himself. And he has not gone nowhere near the punches Tommy has thrown. This is the sixth round. Hearns has dictated the fight right from the opening bell. Again, the right hand that is set up, seems to be setting up, and he threw it. Benitez just threw the right hand that I felt he was trying to set Tommy up for. The lead off right. Now, this is when Benitez should become very aggressive because Tommy threw a lot of punches earlier in that round. This round, rather. And a right hand by Benitez off the right hand by Hearn. And there's the right hand that buckles Benitez. And Benitez is against the ropes and in trouble. Hearn's after him at the bell. Smashing right hand. Benitez just stumbled back to his corner. He's really hurt. There we see Benitez in a, in a zone that we, he hasn't been in much before. Now we're back, back with Tommy Hearns. And the important thing, the crucial thing in this fight is that the offensive fighter is making the defensive fighter fight in a way he doesn't like to. Here we come. There it is, the punch that buckled Benitez earlier in the round before that final crunching right hand on the ropes. Let's take another look at it from another angle. You can see the leverage Tommy got from that right hand. 
Ray, he seems to have been able to measure Benitez and catch Benitez with more big punches than we usually see Benitez catching. And because, because of Tommy's reach and Tommy's speed, I think that's the factor there. The other thing, Ray, is that it seems to really be right on balance with his punches. I mean, everything, Tommy has learned a great deal. And uh, express is always a factor. And here, <laughs> Benitez is trying to use his experience, but maybe Tommy's just too big, too fast, and uh, just too much for Benitez. But the fight is still not over. You can, never can tell what's going to happen. Well, Benitez has been in that place before. He staggered back to his corner against Harold Weston after being knocked down and came back and won the fight. Uh, can Tommy carry that much weight? Is he uh, stronger at 154 pounds? And I feel he is. I think he can carry 160 pounds. He has his, his body can carry that kind of weight and be comfortable with. Burns being very patient here. This is the seventh round. Two minutes remaining. Cutting the ring off against Benitez. Fighting a very smart fight. Now Tommy's moving so much that Benitez can't set up. If I was Benitez, you know, at this point now, he has become more aggressive now. It's difficult to win a fight against Tommy Hearns moving backwards. He has to get inside, work Tommy's body, see how Tommy likes it there. But from the outside, Tommy's just too quick and uh, too tall for Benitez. There's a right hand by Benitez. Hearns kind of grins back at him. You know, Tommy has the tendency to smile when he's hurt. When he smiles at me, I know he's in trouble. <laughs> he may be in trouble now, but I doubt it very seriously. Only Tommy knows for sure. Doubling up with the left hand is Hearns. Inside the third right hand. Mark. That right hand was a good right hand, though. And another right hand by Benitez. You're starting to see a different Benitez now. Doubling up with the left hand again, but that was one of Benitez's better rounds. I thought it was his best round, but I called it an even round. He's trying to solve his taller opponent. Let's to listen to Emmanuel Stewart. You got to start tightening up the gap. You give him too much time waiting on him now. You got to pick him. You're letting him get his stuff together. Okay. Keep your left hand up where you can start shielding the right hand. That's the only thing you got to look out for. So far, his left hook and his jab is not working. And keeping plenty of pressure on him. He eased up on him too much, you know. You gotta ease up. You gotta get in his confidence, get his rhythm up. You gotta start cracking them right hands to the body. Whether they land down here, don't matter. Just keep hitting them down here, hitting them down here. Then it'll come right across the shoulder, okay? Start shooting them down into his body. So you have got so many opportunities. This fight could be over with this round if you come out and open up on it. And there's Wilfred Benitez. You wonder when he's going to abandon his basically defensive attitude and decide that it isn't working and that he must become offensive if he wants to retain his title. And Emmanuel Stewart saying, keep the pressure on. You let him off a little bit too much in that last round. He started to get his confidence. He also said, as you heard, that his jab has been ineffectual so far because he has not been using that much. And the fact that, like I stated earlier, if Tommy can't hit the head, he needs to go to the body. Carry down there a couple of times. Benitez has to be more offensive. He has to go to work now. Burns getting that jab into the face of Wilfred Benitez. Benitez tried to make his fight his, his opponent fall asleep. This is Good right hand again. 
He's trying to do this with Tommy Bell. He's, he gets inside, he faints and everything, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself falling asleep. Well, I really am impressed with what looks to me to be Hearn's maturity here. I thought he fought a very mature fight against you, too, but he just seems to have grown up as a fighter. Well, Tommy's going to get better and better. I mean, he, he's at that stage now. He's, he's going to grow with uh, his uh, career. Benitez. This is what Benitez has to do. Get inside with Tommy. Make him exchange punches. Left hand counter punch, but he took one to give one. You know, both fighters are making each other think because they, they're starting to land now. There's some pretty good punches. Benitez, Tommy will never see it. Because so far, Benitez has been down. He gets inside, and he works the body, then he comes to the head. But if he start off, start off with the movement right hand, I don't think Tommy will be able to see that. That was an effective punch for you in that fight, too, of course. Very effective. You see, Tommy's being affected now by the left jab. There's a right hand of the ribs and a left hand, which is a little bit short. Benitez scores, but once again, it scores not really flush because it's getting Hearns while he's on his bicycle. So he's taking away the force from the punch. Let's take a look at Wilfred Benitez. Larry Holmes, what does Benitez have to do to pull this fight out? I think he's doing the right thing now. He's starting to counter Tommy's left jab, and Tommy's starting to fatigue a little bit. His corner's not putting the ice pack on his neck. Uh, they're putting it on the neck, but they're not really putting water on him to cool him off. There's a, there was almost the best combination of Wilfred Benitez uh, fight, uh, right to the body, a left that, that missed. Tommy still got to come on and use that jab. He got to get a little bit more energy. There's always, there's been a question about the stamina of Hearns. And do you think that that's the thing that can hold him back now from winning? Yes, it is. It's the thing that will hold him back if he don't get it together. We come to the ninth round. Hey, both of you Larry's age. Tommy has stamina. Believe me, <laughs> a great deal. A little bit too much. <laughs> Combination there by Benitez. I like those punches thrown by Benitez because now he's starting to work the body. He's going to the body a lot more with some pretty good shots. Benitez seemingly measuring Hearns a little bit better than before. Quick a left hand. Tommy wants to turn the ring. He doesn't want him against the ropes. It's a lunging right hand by Benitez. Benitez has gone to that right hand lead a couple of times in the last two rounds. You know, in training, Tommy, uh, I thought he was working on keeping his hands up, the left hand up higher. But, you know, as the rounds go by each round, it goes lower and lower. And I wouldn't be surprised if it went back down to his leg like he normally keeps it. Didn't you say that you get more power from your left hand being in that position? I get a lot of more power. I get more leverage because as I bring it up. It's like a snap. It's more snap. It seems obvious that Benitez is going to throw a leadoff fight again. The body, 
that his stance and the way he seems like he's waiting. He's waiting for an opportunity, but Tyrone won't give him that opportunity. That is something you can't do against Tom. You can't reach, you can't telegraph your punches. Inside the one minute mark, round nine. The best thing Benitez can do, and he, and he, he, he do it in spurts, is faint. Faint, get inside, and then work. Because you notice every time Benitez give Tom a head or a head or arm faint, Tom will throw a punch, he attempt, you see him shake. that Benitez can't make it go straight into Tommy. Benitez took one and gave one again, and Hurst is knocked back with the left hand. They say it was a punch, not a knockdown. Hearns is saying, no, I think it was a punch. It was a left hand from Benitez. It might have been set up by a counter-punching right. End of round nine. I'm curious to see this myself. It appeared to me, uh, Barry and Ray, that that was a part punch and part off-balance push. But nevertheless, it's been scored a knockdown. And that could have a very positive effect on Benitez. Yeah, it didn't look like a really good punch at all. It, it sort of, it hit Hearns high on the head and just sort of tilted him over. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Hearn's corner now. This is the 10th round. Two similar knockdowns, one by each man. Got a half punch, half push. Hearns was not hurt by that, no more than Benitez was when he got knocked out. You know, Benitez gets hit by the left hook of Tom every time he comes in, and then he raises, he puts his hands up later on. There was a good right hand by Benitez, and Hearns did not flinch, he gets out of there. Solid right hand. Benitez continuing to counter punch. Right hand lead by Benitez. saying, you come here. And Hearns wants things his way, but he says wants things his way. That swelling is really alongside the eye, back of the cheek, actually, of Wilfred Benitez. Trying to measure 
Harris and missed with the right hand at the bell. That vicious exchange is perhaps uh, the busiest exchange I've ever seen Wilfred Benitez in, which speaks both to the condition of the fight and the fact that he is a champion who's trying to come back. Let's see what happened in that exchange. There was a good left hand behind, but Hearns came back with a strong right hand right on the button to retake the initiative. But here comes Benitez right straight back looking for some place to land. A good body shot by Benitez that slipped in there between the long arms of Tommy Hearns. The situation is getting desperate for Benitez, and Benitez is trying to come up to that situation and give the right answer. This is the 11th round. Lutez trying to pick up the pace here. Particularly tired. There's a right hand by Benitez. That was a pretty good shot. And he takes the right hand. Says, no, I'm not hurt. But he took a good shot from Hearns. Hearns gets the better of it on the ropes almost invariably. It was Hearns that gets better leverage. Mainly because of his height advantage. And Benitez, once Benitez gets his eyes, because he does get the position, but all of a sudden, he doesn't find room enough to throw some big shots. And you'll see, he'll work, Benitez will work his way in, he gets there, and uh, all of a sudden he say, well, this wall is bigger than I thought it was. was a butt. Neither man is damaged, but you saw Tommy Hearns call the attention of Octavio Moran. Tommy Hearns has looked very impressive. I mean, he's fighting a, he's fighting a real, a true champion here in Benitez. He's fighting a very smart fight, too. You know, it's funny, bro. You know, I, I'm sitting on the outside, and uh, it's like the rounds are going by so fast. But in that ring, the round seems really take hours before they pass, especially on the losing end. It's much easier for Larry Merchant and I out here, I'll tell you. We, we are undefeated out here, and we could fight every couple of weeks. Well, I prefer to dress this way. <laughs> see Tommy Hearns letting up at all and giving Benitez any chance to seize the initiative. Well, Tommy's doing what he has to do to win. He got that jab working, he got that quick right hand, and he also counters. Benitez don't know what to do. He's kind of confused. You see, let's listen to Emmanuel Stewart and Tommy Hearns. You got a grand on him, man. That's what you're doing. Oh. The round is coming up. Keep your hands up now. Be sure you keep them up. Well, I'll tell if your attacks get close together. You're shooting them if you get too much time in between. Interesting side play there where Emmanuel Stewart is now saying 
to Tommy Hearns. It's okay if he wants to be back on the ropes. We don't have to be afraid of him there anymore. Thus indicating that he feels Tommy Hearns has things in hand. This is the 12th. Tommy just winked at me just before the round started. I guess just to reassure me that everything is in a com complete control. Well, it looks that way right now. One thing that does impress me is that the corner of Tommy Hearns is very calm. And I've always, it's always been my experience that the corner that is more collected, more calm, is the most effective. Well, that, that is must. I mean, Tommy Hearns' corner is very professional. He's managed to it. He knows the business. He knows exactly what he's talking about. Blood from the nose of Wilfred Benitez now. And also a little bit of a cut, I believe, on the bridge of the nose. That's the long side, the left eye, and that could cause Benitez some problems. has his corner and his father Goyo Gregorio urging him onward but Benitez can't seem to double up against the very effective Tommy Hearns tonight you see Tommy Hearns can let that right hand go at any given moment and that's what Benitez has to be very careful of when, he, when he's coming in although he's, he's doing the right thing by fainting he's still vulnerable for that straight right hand because he's coming straight at Tommy I think I would see anybody be able to dictate the tempo of the fight against somebody like Wilfred Benitez, and yet I think Tommy Hearns has done that so far, Ray. Well, again, you know um, Tommy Hearns, he, he extends that left hand. He's got to knock it down. Knock it out of the way. It's not supposed to be there anyway, so knock it down. Benitez is picking the pace up, but he's walking in. Took a good shot. That was a good left hand from Hearns. is starting to show the beating it has taken from both the left and right hand of Tommy Hearns. I know you can relate to that. Yes, in fact, they've always criticized Tommy for not having stamina. Once he fought me, that proved he has stamina. But recently, Tommy has not been going the distance. And still, here's the 12th round. He looks very fresh. Keeping Benitez at the end of the left jab. Inside of 10 seconds, round 12. He can do this for 40 rounds, sorry. He looks very strong. He's been on his toes the right time, worked the ring very well, fighting a very smart fight. Let's take a look at the champion, Wilfred Benitez, a man who's crowned right now appears to be toppling. You can almost see it falling down around his eyes at this moment. One of the reasons that Benitez isn't effective, Ray, as he goes after Hearns, is that he's, he's practically never had to do it during his career. He's not comfortable throwing more than a, a one punch or a punch and a half as he moves forward, and then his initiative seems to peter out. And also, the fact that Benitez always had trouble with boxer. With me, when I was able to move and utilize the ring, it frustrated him in a sense. Three more rounds, and Tommy Hearns will have come all the way back from that defeat by Ray Leonard. This is the 13th, and Wilfred Benitez is simply running out of time and running after Tommy Hearns. Again, Benitez is running in with that head. Very dangerous against a man like Tommy Hearns because of that right hand Tommy has. Each man has been knocked down once, each a questionable knockdown. So Benitez, he's close that left jab out to get close to Tommy. And quite naturally, the jab is to get you closer, but you can't float it out there. You have to stick it out with authority. Again, Benitez gets the one punch in, but cannot double up. And left hand caught the 
glove of Tommy Hurts. Keeping his man off him. Using the ring. And draws a warning for Buddy. Benitez now, she's just can't get close enough because Tommy is. He moves back when uh, Benitez tries to get in. And he just can't get in position to do any serious damage to uh, Tommy Hearn. It's very frustrating for a fighter, especially for Benitez at this point here. I guess he feels he's behind, you know, especially uh, by points, and uh, he wants to pour it on. But this time won't give him the opportunity. Trying to press Hearns, and he just can't get close enough. It's like pouring water on a fire that just won't go out. <laughs> Let's take a look at both fighters here and wonder what's going on inside this really outstanding champion's head. Okay. Once again, we come late into a fight. Frequently, a, a real champion will pull out everything to try to win and leave himself exposed and perhaps get stuck. We're at that 14th round where something frequently happens. Be alert, I tell. Tommy Hearns, it would appear for all intents, would need only to stay on his two feet to win the Super Waterway Championship. He aspires to four championships. Well, I talked about strategy earlier, Barry, and uh, Tommy has found the right you know, tactics of approaching this fight. Boxing, using that jab, consistently keeping his man off balance. And when he get inside, put his punches together. And here we are in the 14th round. There are no signs whatsoever of fatigue. And as both fighters are in great shape, and they both approach this fight with, you know, positive, very positive. And we look for a tactical fighter, and it's been just that, except that it is Tommy Hearns' tactics who dominated the fight. Does. 
positive force in the ring like Tommy Hearns and a powerful, what I've called negative force like Benitez, the positive force usually comes out on top. That's true, but what we have here is two magnets turned the opposite way. And uh, with Tommy seems to be more positive now and more uh, assured what he's going to do and what he's about to uh, complete in this next round. Well, Tommy Hearns, true enough, has never fought 15 rounds. He has fought almost 14. You've been right off. Larry, just for the record, how do you have it at this point? I assume Benitez would have to knock him out. I think he needs a double knockout for one. <laughs> I couldn't hear correctly in Tommy's point. I don't know what that, whether or not they told him, don't showboat or showboat. Has to get him down for a count of 20. <laughs> <laughs> and even then it'll be close. Well, Benitez just had a good right hand against Tommy. So Benitez's work is cut out. He knows he's got to go get it. And he's got about two and a half minutes to do that. Did get a right hand in. Took a left hand, a straight left jab by Hearns. Benitez trying to press him. That right hand we saw Benitez, uh, they threw against uh, Maurice Hope to, to gain that title. I haven't seen the same attempt to throw it yet. That was one of those one in a million punches. It's such a surprising punch too, bro. I mean, because you really can't see it coming. It's a looping right hand. There's a right hand, but Hearns does not take a backward step. Benitez doesn't seem to have a snap on his punch. He throws his right hand and he puts his other hand along with it. keeps Benitez off of it. Well, the way things look to me, Barry, Tommy has been in complete control, and uh, he can just put another belt around his waist. But a very intelligent fight did Tommy Hearns, and barring some bizarre scoring, which we have seen before. You might see Tommy Hearns shuffle, because when he feels good, he does a shuffle. Crowd is on its feet here, exhorting what they expect will be the new champion. Benitez down to 30 seconds. A great of a technician Benitez is, he just couldn't find a way that was effective enough to get through Tommy Hearns' uh, defense. This one is just about history. Inside of 10, Benitez found Hearns with the right hand, did not hurt him. It's all over, and a great fight it was. Excellent fight. Two good warriors. Two worthy champions. And a lot of respect 
being shown to one another in there too. I oh, think. I knew there was mutual respect between both fighters long before the, the fight even started. Um, Tommy Hearns, I mean, he deserved, he, was, he had a, such an impressive showing against a great fighter, a great champion like Wilfred Brunetti. Yeah, that's the thing that really strikes me. Is it, it was an impressive showing to be sure, but the fact that he did it against a fighter of Benitez's caliber is another story altogether. I mean, that's what you have to look at, the fact of who he did it against. Benitez, a great fighter. A lot of people don't know how great this man really is. Right now to the ring announcer, let's get the official decision from Jimmy Lennon. Jimmy? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. Lou Filippo of California sees it 142 to 142, calling it even. He is overruled by Judge Dick Young, 146 to 136. Tony Castellano, 144 to 139. In favor of the winner by majority vote, the new super champion, Tommy Hitman. Tommy, that moment at the end of a fight when you hear the decision, you're a new champion, you feel redemption, can you describe it at all? What's well, a great feeling for me, Larry. Uh, knowing that you, I have once again returned back to the ring and being able to grab a title again, it made me very happy. Ray, any questions for Tommy? Yes, Tommy, you fought a very strategic fight with Benitez. Uh, I mean, you utilize the ring, you utilize your boxing skills. You hurt your hand between the seventh and eighth round. It never appeared to me that your hand was injured while you was boxing. Did that make you change your tactics? Well, it did make me kind of change because I wanted to get in there and try to land more heavier shots, Ray, uh, but um, my right hand wouldn't allow me. So what I had to do was just try to use the jab and just basically work off the left jab. I knew my left jab was to be a big factor in the fight, so my basic thought was to just get the left jab to work. It. Show us that hand, would you, Tommy, please, and tell us what what is wrong with it and how long it's going to take to okay, heal. Right now, it's just dislocated. I dislocated my hand, and possibly it will take probably uh, my doctor told me about a month, a month and a half before I'll be able to start taking um, therapy on my hand. So right now, I just gotta relax and. Just lay back and do nothing. All right, what does this do to your timetable for the year? Particularly, do you look forward to fighting Marvin Hagler for the middleweight championship sometime later this year? No, Larry, I'm not looking forward to fighting Marvin right now. Right now, I'm just planning on, after my hand as well, just defend my title a few times, and then no telling where I go from there. Thanks very much, Tommy Hearns. And now, back to Barry Tompkins. Okay, thank you, Larry Merchant, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Tommy Hearns. Bless you. Punches. I knock him out with an uppercut. Uppercuts don't knock you out. And he shouldn't be just taking the punches like this, trying to block the way to the open. To get Mike Weaver's dose off of him, he got to throw punches back. One of those sensors, he got good lateral movement. What Weaver got to do is to cut off the ring. This is how he should do it. One thing about Michael Dose, he uh, has a good double left jab 